In this mobile learning demo, we will be reviewing Android Enterprise for BYOD devices. This is going to include what Android Enterprise is, what sorts of configurations and enablement are available, the security and DLP controls you can put into place, and the benefits over the legacy Android experience. So jumping into it, what is Android Enterprise? Well, it's a Google technology that enables secure Android deployments among a broad range of devices. So it gives you a way to securely create a work profile on the device in the case of BYOD, and you're able to push down applications, configurations into it, and then also manage all those configurations and applications within it. That way you have control over your devices. And on top of that, you get a consistent experience for your end users. So no matter which manufacturer they have, they'll have the same experience as another user on a different device. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the end user device demo now. And we're gonna go through some of the typical use cases like pushing down email to the device, pushing applications out, and the different controls that you have over that work profile. So starting off, we'll jump into this work folder. This device is already enrolled. When I enrolled my device, I had the work folder automatically created on it. So it makes it really easy for your users to find their work applications. Now, the other thing that happens as well is when the applications come down, they're matched with a suitcase icon. Now, this is a way for your users to differentiate the difference between a work application and a personal application. So if I jump back here on the main screen, you can actually see the Play Store app here. And that one's not bad. That's the personal side of the device. But if I jump into this work folder, I can see the work version of the Play Store application. So it's a really visual method for your end users to tell what are their personal apps, what are their work applications, and they get the benefit of having both on that device. Now we'll jump into one of our first use cases, accessing email for your end users. So one of the ways you can do that is you can push down the Mobile Iron Email Plus application. You can actually pre-configure this application with things like the server name, the username, email address, some restrictions to the application. So I'll go ahead and launch it here. Now, I'm prompted to put in a security passcode. This is actually a container level passcode that you can enforce on the device. That way you have the option of maybe not doing a device level passcode or doing both. That way you have some additional DLP controls over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my passcode now. And then the admin has some restrictions they can do for how complex that passcode needs to be and how often the user needs to put it into the device to access those applications. Now you can see I have my email already populated in here. Um, you can actually do some different controls for it, like how many days of email to push down, what the authentication method is. So if you're doing something like cert-based authentication, you can actually push a cert to the device so the user doesn't have to put in their password. But I can go ahead and Basic email ability, I can go ahead and browse my different folders in here. I can search for my email. I can create new email. And if I jump into one of my uh, messages here, you can see I have an attachment here. So I'll go ahead and show you one of the additional DLPs you can do. I don't want this attachment opening into the personal side of the device where I can't remove the attachment off of it. So if I hold down on here to open up the attachment, it actually prompts me which application I want to open it in. And you'll see Android Enterprise only allows you to open it into other Android Enterprise applications. That way, none of your data is leaking out from that work container on the device. So what we're going to go ahead and do is open it into another mobile iron application called Docs at Work. So when I launch Docs at Work here, uh, it actually has multiple functionalities. So one of them is a secure document editor. So you can see I have my PowerPoint in here. And if I wanted to edit it, maybe I don't wanna just view it. I can click on the edit button and I can create additional slides. I can use different profiles, enter in text. I can add in things like images, text boxes. So you have a lot of the same functionality you would if you're trying to edit it on the desktop. So this is really useful for your end users because now they're going to be able to edit content on the go. So if they need to make minor changes or even create content, they can go ahead and do it from the Docs at Work app. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and save. And it's gonna save it within the Docs at Work application. And let's go ahead and exit out of this. So it lets me choose where to save it to. So I can go ahead and create an additional folder or just save it to the generic root level folder. So we'll just save it to the root level. 
and I can see where my file is. Now I can also from here create additional folders, create additional documents. So you actually have the ability to create Word or Excel, PowerPoint, notes within Docs at Works. So it's a really good editing tool for your end users and it's secure so your data doesn't leak out. Now Docs at Work also allows you to access content repositories. So you can see here I have SharePoint populated. You can also access things like network shared drives or some cloud services as well. And when I drill into the folder here, you can see that I have all my different folders that I would need access to. And I can download my different files as well, edit them. And if my admin allows me, I can also upload these files back to my content repository. So the admin has some control over the direction the data goes and if it's read only or not. Now, the way that you get access to things that might be behind the firewall, you know, typically SharePoint might be behind a firewall, a network share drive well is there's another application MobileIron can enable with Android Enterprise called MobileIron Tunnel. So MobileIron Tunnel right now is already engaged on the device. As an end user, all I would have had to do initially was launch the tunnel application and tell it to connect. Now this actually connects to a MobileIron Sentry virtual appliance and it handles whether or not a device is authorized to pass through into your corporate network and it can also check if the device is currently registered and in compliance. So it's a really good tool to enable your end users to gain access to internal resources as well. And it's very useful because it's all cert based. So the end user gets a certificate pushed to them and they don't have to put in anything like a username or password. And within the tunnel application, I can actually choose which apps within the Android Enterprise container are allowed to access the tunnel. So I can choose specific apps to or just allow all of them do a whitelist or a blacklist. Now, the next one we'll go into are some non-mobile iron applications. So you can push out standard Play Store apps down to the device as well. And in many cases, you can actually pre-configure the application. So if the developer created a configuration for it, it'll show up in your admin console and you can go ahead and fill out the different fields that they made available. So one example is the Chrome application. So if I launch Chrome here, we can go ahead and see that I already have some bookmarks pushed down. So we're going to go ahead and go over to bookmarks. And I can see my different links that are here. So I can see my managed bookmarks and it makes it really easy for your end users to get to sites that might normally be difficult for them. So they might not remember the different links. And then on top of that, it might be behind a firewall that they can't normally access. So using mobile iron tunnel plus this configuration makes it really easy for your end users. Now, you also have the option to do a blacklist as well. So if I want to, we're going to go ahead and paste in a link here. And we're going to try to go to WikiLeaks. And when I launch it, that site's blocked. So you can actually block different sites that you want to. You can do a whitelist or a blacklist. And there's actually a number of configurations you can do with the Chrome application. So jumping back here. You can also see I have other applications as well, things like Salesforce, it can also be pre-configured. Now another feature that will help out your end user is access to be able to download applications. So what we're going to do is jump into the Play Store and I can see all the applications that have been made available to this end user. So I can go ahead and see if there's any featured apps, new apps that have been added in. The user can browse by category to download these applications. Now these applications can also be installed silently, either at device check-in or at initial registration. Uh, the big benefit of this is compared to the legacy version of Android where the user would have to manually download each application, they'd be prompted for every single app they want to install. Uh, Android Enterprise, all the apps come down silently. So it really saves your end user a lot of time. So we'll go ahead and download the Microsoft Word application and it's just gonna start downloading in the background. So it really makes it easy for my end users. Now next we're gonna go into some of the data loss prevention controls that you have on the device as well. So one of the most basic examples is just restricting copy and paste across the profiles. So we'll go ahead, we're gonna to go to my email account here, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy out some text from within here. So this was, is within the work container. Whoops. Copy that out. And now we're going to go ahead and try to open it up into the normal Chrome application. 
So I copied out my signature there. When I paste it into here though, you can see nothing gets pasted in. And that's because the two profiles can't talk to each other. So the work clipboard's not able to access the personal clipboard and vice versa. So that's just one example of the data loss prevention controls that you have. Now there's some additional controls that you'll see here. So jumping over to the admin console here briefly, you can see some of the additional lockdowns and controls you can do. So some of the common ones are disabling screen capture, so they can't capture the screen of uh, the work profile. Disabling uh, cross profile copy and paste so that they can't move data into the personal side of it. Disallowing outgoing beam or sharing location. Uh, you can also do things like preventing the user from modifying accounts. So if you have some static accounts, maybe you're doing something with cert based authentication where the user never needs to re-enter in their password, it's a great way to restrict control and access to uh, creating new accounts on the device or within the work profile. Now jumping back to the device, we're going to go ahead and see what happens when you retire that device. So if I issue a retire command from the admin portal, we're going to end up seeing all the different applications and data get taken off that device. So I'm going to go ahead and initiate that retire command now from my admin portal. And now you're seeing instantly things are starting to get removed and now all that work data is gone. If I go back to apps, all my work applications have been removed, all the data has been taken with it. Now we do have some resources available online. If you want to get a little bit more information about Android Enterprise, we have our Center of Excellence, which explains how to set up everything for your organization. And we also have a feature matrix. Now Android Enterprise does require a certain minimum version to be able to be enabled. Uh, some devices on Android 5.0 are enabled with it. Anything running 6.0 or higher will be able to run it as it was made mandatory by Google for manufacturers to implement it. Now with that, I hope you enjoyed this Mobile Iron Android Enterprise demo. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to your Mobile Iron account rep and they'll be able to help you out. Thank you.